Das ist It's finally football time in the bluegrass, and we're kicking off week one with a game-by-game -game preview of Kentucky's upcoming season with several of your favorite KSR website and podcast personalities. Our season preview show on KSR's YouTube channel is the first of many to come as we are integrating all of our shows to YouTube broadcasts. So go ahead and hit subscribe on KSR's YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of this fun. If you're already here, go ahead and do that now. We'll give you a minute, and you can keep listening while you do it. Now for the football talk. I am KSR's Drew Franklin, joined by a panel of these beautiful experts. We have Nick Roush and Adam Luckett, two of our football experts, as well as Ms. Tyler Thompson, the editor-in-chief of this operation. And we called in some extra help from the basketball side of KSR with Jack Pilgrim and Zach Gagan. And then the rare sighting of KSR's oldest fake intern, BTI, is here to also weigh in with his picks. We'll also reveal picks from everyone else in the company who couldn't join us tonight because they had other things like their son's middle school football game. But now we'll just go ahead and get right to it with our game-by-game -game picks and thoughts on what we might have for UK football this season. We're going to start off. We have a season opener coming up in just a few days with the Miami Redhawks pick to win the MAC East. That spread started at 20 and a half, and it is all the way down to 16 after some developments today. To, to save a little time, we won't, I assume – we're all wins here, but we're yeah. going to let Luckett share some thoughts. We know he's studied up on his maxion of what he has for uh, the Red Hawks. And if anyone wants to pick a loss, you can jump right in. Yeah, we've seen the Kentucky stinker special. Usually one game in the non-conference, they come out and lay an egg. There's going to be a lot of action, I think, on Miami, Ohio with the Rodriguez news. But all signs point to Kentucky probably handling business here. Um, Miami's rebuilding a lot on defense, so Kentucky with – an NFL quarterback should kind of have their way on offense. The defense could be challenged a little bit, but overall this should be a game Kentucky handles with rel with ease. I think they might be challenged at times, but for the, they should pull away late. Um, so when you're looking for maybe what, what, what would be the game to fade Kentucky, I don't think it's this one. I think it's a lot of value here, especially if you can get Kentucky at a cheap price. So I like the Cats this week, week one, and I think it's W's across the board here. Hammer down. Um, Hammer down. I do have three fun facts, though. We love fun facts at KSR. Fun fact number one, their quarterback is Blaine Gabbert's yep. little brother. Fun fact number two, the last time Kentucky shut out an opponent, it was Miami of Ohio back at Don't Call Me Paul Brown Stadium in 2009. And fun fact number three, Mark Stoops' first victory was over Miami of Ohio. There you go. That's your, your, your cocktail hour fun facts for the week. You're welcome. The Blaine, Gabbard like fact, win. the Blaine Gabbard fact has to be the least fun, fun fact I've ever heard in my life. Too. <laughs> There's nothing fun about Blaine Gabbard or his siblings. Anyone so going with a loss game. there? And we will move on to the game that matters. Anybody? Let's keep it rolling. We have a very important one in week two, which will really decide a lot of the excitement for the season when Kentucky travels to Florida. Florida coming off playing seventh-ranked Utah, which uh, could beat them up pretty well in week one this coming Saturday. Uh, I know we'll probably have some mixed picks here. Uh, Roush, why don't you go ahead and start us off with what you see from this game, and then I'll just kind of call on people and we'll all touch on this one. I, I think the, the Utah game is going to play a significant role here, mostly because you got a new coach in. This is the first time they've, you know, you, you buy into all the 1,700,000 the quality control support staff coaches, but you really don't know until you play. And if they get punched in the mouth week one versus Utah, I know that there's always this narrative of like, do you want them to be hungry after a loss? No, you want this team to have doubt. Like, Because right now you're doubting, is this new coach the real deal or not? A lot of these guys were recruited by the old regime. Is Billy Napier the real deal? If you lose to Utah and if Kentucky hits them in the mouth early, that doubt is really going to settle in. Uh, I, I like Kentucky in this game mostly for their depth in the trenches, the physicality. Florida, they, they, they're a Mickey Mouse kind of team that loves to beat you with skill guys. And Kadarius Tony. Kyle Pitts, those those th those kind of skill guys that wowed you, your Percy Harvins in the past that BTI broke down 17 years ago, like they, they don't have those guys. They're good, but they're not what they used to, day, to be. So I really like the physicality uh, for Kentucky in this matchup, particularly if they lose to Utah in week one. Tyler, you've seen a lot of these games as our longtime editor. What is your take on Kentucky versus the Gators in week two? 
I mean, I think that Kentucky's kind of gotten over the fear of playing Florida. They've proven they can beat Florida in the swamp. They proved they could beat Florida last year. Even though they're going to probably be without Chris Rodriguez, I think this team is good enough to win without him in the swamp. And I just, I'm going with the W because I really do believe in this team. And I think they're going to have a lot of momentum to start the year. BTI? I actually picked this one as a loss. I think that they probably get trounced by Utah in week one. I think there's a serious gap there. But I kind of view it opposite of what Nick said. I think if they lose, they become far more dangerous in week two than if they win. If I'm a Kentucky fan, I'd want them to win against Utah, get pretty cocky, and then Kentucky kind of sneaks under the radar, goes in there, and surprises them week two. So, you know, I'm not openly cheering for Florida in week one, but I kind of hope they beat Utah, and I think that helps Kentucky out. I don't know why you brought all this negative energy to week two. We're all picking wins, and you've already got us losing. Jack, you're smiling. Give us a win. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat where I think it's either you need to see them either at their highest point or their lowest point. And I'm predicting an early week one surprise victory for the Florida Gators. They think that they're all high and mighty, think that they're going to come in and crush Kentucky the next week. And then Mark Stoops and company go down to the swamp uh, and kick their rear end. And I'm and, uh, picking a, a uh, very close victory down the stretch for the Kentucky Wildcats in Gainesville. Zach? I'm also taking the Nick Roush approach here as well. And I, I think that Florida losing badly to Utah will allow a first year head coach to maybe get in his own head a little bit. And I think that's where Kentucky can kind of uh, maybe make their mark there. And I don't, like Tyler said, they don't have that, uh, that weight on their shoulders anymore of not winning down there. So they know how to do that as well. Uh, so I'll just kind of put those things together. And I think playing uh a decent team in Miami week one will get Kentucky just confident enough to, you know, not maybe get too big of a head. And I think they pull that one out maybe by two touchdowns. Even. I, I love the thought of Billy Napier getting into his own head. Cause look at this dude already wrote an open letter to his fan base like two months into his job. He did. <laughs> did you got to keep the Gators at bay? Um, they, they, they like to give off the takes as one would say, I guess we're throwing it to me here. I actually think we could see something play out where it's the opposite of what you're all saying. I think they can beat Utah week one. And then all week it's Georgia's top competition is Florida in the east. Um, Billy Napier is the next Steve Spurrier, yada, yada, yada. (laughs) Even if that doesn't happen, I still think Kentucky can win this game, even if their back's against the wall. A lot of this is these two rosters are very, very similar. If you do the old position by position breakdown, it's going to be five four six five. It's going to be pretty close, but I think Kentucky has a little bit of an edge. Then you add the coaching stability on top of it, and I think a lot of this could come down to Will Levis versus Anthony Richardson. Who do you like more? I think Levis is a better quarterback. I think Kentucky early. Both teams like depth shouldn't be an issue. Should both still be pretty fresh. Give me the better team on the road, um, a team that's proven with stability. I'm going to take Kentucky on the road to beat Florida and to really start what we think could be a big season on the right foot. I, I would just like to briefly add that the, all of the concerns about not having Chris Rodriguez for this game, they are very legitimate. Uh, the only time Kentucky's yes. won down there in my lifetime, they averaged seven yards a carry, and Benny Snell had a buck 75. Like, that's keeping it on the ground. Like this feels like a game first to 24 is going to win. You would feel great about it. I felt great about it all off season. If you had 20, number 24 out there, it makes you feel less great. You need to see what you have in the Kentucky running game, but they, I think they match up very well with Florida and they have tape on Billy Napier and they're going to get a, like Florida's going to have to open up the playbook. We go on, right. Um, mm-hmm. Playing a good Utah team. So I think that that plays in Kentucky's favor. Uh, before I add my pick, I'll note that uh, some of our friends who couldn't be here, Matt, Ryan, and Maria, picked the Gators. I'm glad they left that neg- negativity at home. I will add some positivity. We all here, we, we're used to the curse. We're afraid of the swamp. Florida has haunted our lifetimes. But this team, they don't even know what the streak is. They've played them close the last four or five years. The new guys have more swagger than the Florida players. Florida's down this year. I think Kentucky goes in there and wins it. I don't think it's very close. I'm not saying a blowout, but I think we're feeling pretty good right out of the gate after a blowout in week one against Miami. I'm taking the Cats here. And BTI, Matt, Ryan, Maria, all you all picking the Gators, no more of that moving forward. Speaking of moving forward, we're back in Kroger Field for week three with the fighting Youngstowns of Youngstown State, uh, a team that probably the worst on the schedule, I'd say, outside of Louisville, of course. 
But uh, anyone want to step up and, t- you know, throw out a loss here? I, I don't believe we're going to get one. Will we learn Mark Stoops' nickname ahead of this? I know we love the storylines. We got a lot of them against Iowa. Now we got Youngstown State. Um, is I, We, we got to get some Youngstown Penguin stories, right? I'm sure he's given tickets to the whole town. We, we might be able to see some of his pals in the parking lot and get all kinds of good stories. Ooh, uh, best Youngstown player under Stoops from the city. Go, BTI. From from what city? This city? Youngstown, yeah. Come on. Oh, there, there's a, <coughs> Glenn Bowden. Glenn Bowden. Maurice, Maurice Claret, right? No. For, under for Stoops. Mark this isn't even a debate. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, no clue. Yeah, it's Bowden. It's Glenn Bowden. Glenn Bowden. <laughs> BTI sucks. <laughs> I feel like I got set up on that, Nick. I knew, <laughs> knew I wasn't going to know that answer. Two yeah. things. Former Kentucky receiver Bryce Oliver is on the Youngstown State roster as their number one receiver. Mm. And if he loses at to Florida, if Kentucky loses to Florida, this is going to be, we project the game that Mark Stoops will break the um, career wins record um, to be, for Bear Bryant and could happen against his Youngstown, or his hometown team. So pretty cool there. He could either break it in the swamp as long as they take over care of Miami, Ohio, or break it at home against Youngstown State. So that is going to be uh, the potential storyline that week. And an additional storyline that just happened since BTI did not get Lynn Bowden. That is 10 more years as an intern <laughs> in that uh, morning post. <laughs> Moving on to week four, another game. I hope we all are picking wins, although it's a little more difficult going back to the Mac, play a little Northern Illinois. Uh, anyone going – Loss? Hope not. I'm not I going believe. loss, but I I think that I honestly think this game could be closer than the Louisville game. I think this could be their closest non-conference game of the year. This is well, the this is the the stoop stinker. This is where they they would get the scare. Um, it's between your FCS opponent right after you break a record, right after you play one of the biggest games of the year, and the following week is a game I think a large chunk of the fan base, probably the most anticipated game on the schedule. Going to the Grove for the first time since 2010, everybody and their cousin, it seems like, is going to that game. And probably going to be a noon kick, right? Like this is the one in Northern Illinois has got a solid team. They've got a team that could really threaten Kentucky. Um, Michigan State transfer at quarterback. They've got a really good running game. Um, the defense is very iffy, so Kentucky should be able to put up a lot of points. But this is the game you would have to worry about if Kentucky comes out, lays an egg, turns it over a bunch of times, you could find yourself in the fourth quarter down to this team. So this would be the one I think you would have to worry about. But I think Kentucky still talent should take over. It should be a win. But this is the one to maybe fade the cats if you're into that sort of thing. Northern Illinois hosts Vanderbilt the week before. So that's a weird little – Good barometer. You'll know what Northern Illinois is yeah. from early in the schedule. Yeah. This is definitely the game where I hammer Kentucky and lose. Uh, even though I know everything you said will happen, it'll be a close game. It's just always too tempting, one of these non-conference games. Uh, moving on. Wagon. What's that? Vanderbilt is a wagon. <laughs> That's you watch them late night in Hawaii? <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Roush and I lost a dollar on that one. Yeah. yeah. No, Moving on to a another road game in the SEC, a game that I have been counting down for for over a decade. We're going to the Grove to play Lane Kiffin in Oxford. Ole Miss will most likely be undefeated at that point, 4-0, because their front end of the schedule is pretty easy. Miss Tyler Thompson, you will also be there, uh, hopefully enjoying several cold beers with me in the parking lot. But what do you see happening in that game? Well, I have to pick Kentucky to win because I'm not going to go to Oxford to watch him lose, even though I think Nick Roush brought up a, a great stat that Kentucky is 0-10 versus SEC West opponents on the road under Mark Stoops, which, you know, historically going on the road, you know, if you're 4-0, and even if you're 3-1, and a loss is a popular, it's a trendy pick there, but I, I feel really good about Kentucky's chances, especially if Chris Rodriguez is back. You know, we're projecting that will be his first game back after his suspension. Um, I, I just think it's going to be a really good test for this group. And I think Kentucky's going to have the momentum and I cannot pick them to lose when I'm going to Oxford for only the second time in my life for a football game. The first time I was like 12 years old and don't even remember it, nor was I able to really experience the Grove. So I'm all cats all the way. 
Having peeked at our uh, our sheet here, I know there's a couple of losing picks in the crowd. Just go ahead and show your faces. <laughs> uh, which one of you wants to go first? I, I would love to because I absolutely hate that SEC West uh, stat there that Nick gave. Uh, it is makes me very uncomfortable. UK uh, has really struggled against Ole Miss just for whatever reason. Lane Kiffin has had Mark Stoops' number. I remember the DK Metcalf uh, end of game touchdown that just broke my heart there a couple of years back. There's just Memory after memory after memory, uh, I, I just don't feel very uh, confident going into this one. I'm picking a, a win at Florida uh, and then the first loss of the se season being against the Rebels down uh, in Oxford. Yeah, I'm following Jack's trend there as well. I'm starting off 4-0, then a loss here. And I feel like my pick has a little bit less to do with football and more so that I just kind of uh, like Lane Kiffin now. More so than I did maybe two years ago. So I'm kind of on the Lane train. And more so than Mark Stoops? Well, he's old news now. He's been here for 10 years. <laughs> Lane Kiffin's the new fresh flavor. I don't know if y'all listen to Pin and Deep, but Freddie was talking about how the new stuff is the cool stuff. So, yeah, I'll go with the uh, I'll go with Ole Miss there. Shannon the Dude also picked a loss here, but uh, also I'm, I'm in that crowd too, and it's completely for selfish reasons. <laughs> I am trying to KSR curse or win into existence because I'm going to be down there. So I'm thinking if I pick the loss now, I'm usually wrong. That will give me a win, and I can – party my ass off in Oxford, but I, I do think they will drop one of Florida Ole Miss or Florida or Ole Miss. And I think it will be the rebels, even though I think Kentucky's the better team. It's just tough to win in the sec. Who wants it next? I can go. Here's a couple of things for me here. Ole Miss over with Lane Kevin's tenure has been of the worst run defense teams in college football. We all remember a couple years ago, COVID year, Kentucky ran for 800 yards and lost. Um, and then last year, they really struggled to stop the run. Number two, lack of stability. Ole Miss is breaking in two new coordinators. They're going to have like 13 transfers starting. Um, so that's a lot of change there. Number three, that this is going to be the game that Chris Rodriguez is back, we, that we expect. First or second game, fresh legs. I think Kentucky's going to be motivated here. I think Kentucky's got the better quarterback on the road. You're sensing a theme in my picks. I'm – Rolling with a better quarterback more times than not, if I think it's close. And they're, they they are due to break break this record. I mean, that's going to happen eventually. We've seen him knock it. Mark Stoops knocked down a lot of doors. This is the next one here. Um, and if you think the Florida Ole Miss swing early is huge, if playing for the East is the ultimate goal, you cannot lose more than two of those games. You have to win at least one of them to give yourself a chance in October and November to set that 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 test up with Georgia. So. It's a big moment here. I think I like Kentucky in both these matchups, Florida and Ole Miss. I think we see a similar start to last year as they get out to a quick uh, two wins in SEC, but more importantly, two row wins. Get those out of the way with four SEC home games remaining. BTI, think, bring some positivity back after you pick the Gators in week two. I'm taking I'm taking Kentucky in this one. I, I kind of feel the same way. It's hard for me to envision them winning at Florida and at Ole Miss. But this game – surprisingly actually scares me more than the Florida game does, even though I'm picking them to lose Florida. Because, um, you know, I think – I just have a lot more faith in Lane Kiffin to be able to – and he's got that thing rolling now. And I, I know, you know, the, the Adam mentioned the new coordinators and the transfers, and I think that's all legitimate. But that's going to be week five or six of the season. When you get to that point in the year, I don't know, it's hard to – it's hard to still use that as a reason that, you know, that, that it, they won't be ready to roll. But I am picking the Cats because – I think Mark Stoops has proven now over the last four or five years, there's always those road environments that we don't think they've ever won at before. And then they go in there and they win. And I think he's earned our, our, our respect to say like Kentucky can go in there and win. And I think that's the one that they, they get the job done this year. My big thing is being an SEC media days. Lane Kiffin is uh, he's a pretty confident individual. I think we would say, and he has pumped breaks on tempered expectations all preseason long. If you watched them last year, they lived and died by Matt Corral. And it wasn't just the Sugar Bowl. Like, he did everything for that team. And now they're going to ask a lot from Jackson Dart, a USC transfer, which they've got USC transfers starting all over the country. And that, what have they done? I mean, I I, I don't know. I, I, I can't trust all of that turnover right away. I know they're going to get five games, BTI, to get used to whatever the new – whatever you want to call it. But they're not going to have any adversity up into that point in the season. I mean, it's one soft toss after another. Kentucky's going to be the first team that really hits them in the mouth. And to Drew and Tyler's point, you all, it's going to be like when Georgia comes up to Kroger Field. Like that's how many UK fans are going down there. It's going to be 
uh, a, a, a feels like a basketball kind of environment where you get all of those road traveling fans. So I, I just, I, I'm really confident, especially if you've got this wave of wins, right? If I'm as cocky as I say I am and they're going to be undefeated at this point, just keep the ball rolling. Keep that steam roll going. Chris Rodriguez, 200 yards. Let's have ourselves a day in the Grove. I love the enthusiasm and hopefully we're all wrong so far, except maybe luck it. And we're five and zero at this point, moving on to week six. When we have those stupid sunglasses playing against Kentucky, those stupid, dumb, gimmicky sunglasses, but I'm definitely not talking about Beamer. Just coincidentally, Kentucky plays South Carolina that week. <laughs> I like, hold on. Can we take a time out on this? Props, props, props. Props. <laughs> props. <laughs> ever since we've Turn worked my video, swag on. <laughs> ever since we've worked video into our jobs, we've always been a kind of <laughs> mysterious people. Nick Roush has turned this into how animated can I be on camera? And I love it. I am here for it. So Nick, you lead us off. Um, well, Duke just scared me. He surprised me. He, he is not scared of Shane Beamer though. Shane Beamer's a bum. Um, uh, Spencer Rattler is overrated. Mark Stoops woes South Carolina with the fire of a thousand suns. They're going to take care of business home. Ain't that right, dude? You say go Wildcats? No, no, we're scared. Okay. <laughs> Good seeing you, Duke. A <laughs> couple more years, we'll be having them on these. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I mean, they hate South Carolina. They want to win by like a million points. So, Nick, you look yeah. like everyone that yells at us on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky, why don't you talk over, take over and talk some football here? Yeah, they're just, he's not losing. They're not losing the Beamer. It's not happening here. I think an important part to remember here is this is the first big home game of the year. It smells like the SEC Network night kickoff. You get the Keeneland double dip. They're going to be ready for this game. I, I think no matter what happens in the games before, like they're going to be gassed up for this game. We've seen it time and time again. I think Kentucky is going to be ready. Um, South Carolina should come in a little fresh here. I think it's a big game for South Carolina, but you got to like Kentucky playing at home in front of Kroger Field early in the season still. Um, and they get out to a, exactly an identical 6-0 start just like last year after beating South Carolina and going 3-0 in SEC play. Jack? Yeah, uh, Kentucky has South Carolina's number. I'm not scared of, of Beamer. I'm not scared of the Gamecocks. Uh, year after year after year after year, we hear the same media talking points that, oh, this is going to be South Carolina's year. The Gamecocks are going to be making a run, blah, 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 blah. No, it's not going to be this time. It's not going to be ever uh, Kentucky rolls. Jack, before we move on, I got to compliment you. You're the basketball writer with two Citrus Bowl pictures as your <laughs> backdrop here. I mean, is this a football, football, football. basketball school thing? Football school, making my, <laughs> making my statement here on our uh, football prediction show. Let's go to our basketball recruiting expert, Zach, up there. What do you have for Cats and Gamecocks? Yeah, I agree with everyone. I think this is uh, going to be a pretty relatively easy win, especially uh, with I have them coming uh, off that loss against Ole Miss. I think we'll definitely be uh, with revenge on the mind. But I do think that this will be, outside of maybe the Georgia game, this will be the best atmosphere at Kroger Field for the reasons that Adam said with it being – the Keeneland double dip and the first real home game. Uh, the South Carolina game is always my favorite one to go to because they always, it all, the crowd is always lives up to the expectations and UK usually does as well. So I think this is an easy win here. BTI. I don't think it's an easy win. It, it rarely is against South Carolina, despite the fact that we win them often. And I'm a little worried about the Ole Miss game coming right before that, you know? So I think if they're four and zero going to Ole Miss and lose, there's a, a potential for a letdown deflation game there. So, I, you know, I'd really love to see them beat Ole Miss, and I think they, that would keep them focused. But it's hard to pick South Carolina in this game with it being at Kroger Field. So I, I think UK wins, but maybe by like 10. Not 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 a huge blowout in this one. Go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, I'll just echo everybody else. You know, I've got this as a win. I think if it was on the road, it'd be maybe a lot closer. But I think, you know, the Shane Beamer stupid sunglasses comment, it's clear that Stoops, Stoops has something on his, you know, a chip on his shoulder about this game. Uh, and also, I'm a little worried we're going to get a Shane Beamer response to all of our criticism. Like, is he going to come out after practice tomorrow and make some, like, dig at – at Nick, you know, putting sunglasses on and the KSR season predictions. Like We should have asked him to come on. He comes on every podcast. <laughs> All you got to do is give him a call. Do you know who my dad is? 
<laughs> Might get one of those from Shane. I feel like that's coming down the pipe. Well, Shane, I do know who your dad is, and it's Mark Stoops because he owns South Carolina. <laughs> so I am also picking the Wildcats here. I believe it was unanimous. Even the people who uh, submitted their ballots and aren't here today, I think it was across the board, everyone picking the Cats because that's what they do in this game. Uh, moving forward, I believe we have a bye week. I don't think anyone has strong thoughts about bye week. We will all win that by hopefully getting a little bit of rest. And then we we'll move yet. on. Mississippi State and then the bye week, right? Oh, did I skip yes. the Mississippi State? Yeah. See, see, mm. My bad. My bad. Oh, that, already well, tells, that, already, that, already, that already tells you that the hangover's coming. Mississippi <laughs> State win. I just, I just told he's myself. Already, he's already, he already chomping at the bit to get a hold of Tennessee. And he just see, skipped I'm, right over Mississippi State. Yeah. I'm Who's doing exactly what Mark Stoop says not to. I'm not taking it one game at a time. I was already looking ahead on the schedule. Mississippi State, I have that one as a win just because as much as I love Leach, that that experiment, I don't know if it's going to work. That program does it. That, they're not built for that style of play. I know Rodgers is a great quarterback, and he'll sling it around, but I think Stoops and the defense will be equipped uh, to handle them there. <laughs> Tyler, you can lead us off with this one. I've also got a win, even though I could see this being a hangover game. Um I just, if it was in Starkville, I'd be a lot more worried, kind of like what I said about South Carolina. But I've got the Cats rolling. You know, they, in my count, they would be 7 and 0 with a win here. So, man, I'm optimistic, but I like it. <laughs> well, let me bring everybody down to earth. Um, I am one of those, like, so Bill Connolly, he does SP, and one of the things he factors into all of his equations is history. And, there's there's one historical trend that I'd like to buck here because I'm very worried about this 3-3-5 defense. It gave Liam Cohen a lot of fits. But this game has been home team wins every time. And it's close in Lexington. Mississippi State usually wins by a lot in Starkville. It's been like that for seven years now, eight years almost. So you would think I'd go with trend, but I just – the way that Liam Cohen I – and mean, he had never seen that defense before last year. Uh, Rich Gangarello, this is an, another pro guy who's never seen a 3-3-5 before. I think it's going to give him fits. In addition, get Will Rogers hot. It's really tough. I, I just I, – I worry that this is a, a 2007 done all over again where you're riding the highest of highs you've ever been, and then you get a rainy game, you fall asleep, and you let Mississippi State steal one from you. Yeah, I'm kind of with Roush here. Um, three through five is obviously like that's an issue, but I, more so the other side. I think last year against Mississippi State, it showed us a little bit about Kentucky's defensive blueprint, and like this could this scheme might be a little bit of kryptonite because you have to have good corners to really play them, especially if they have a good quarterback. I know Kentucky improved the cornerback position in the off season, but I still think that spot has a lot of room for growth. And then the way I shake out the schedule, that a letdown's coming. This is going to be the seventh game in seven weeks. They'll have played three really big SEC games before this one. This just smells like a, a sneaky trap spot for Kentucky. And you add in where I think they could have some issues matching up on both sides of the ball, really. So I think that a, the loss comes here. Um, and everything, every year with Michael Leach, we see one – one game where they play way above their heads, and then one game when they play when they just drop a total stinker. Uh, the hope here would be that maybe this year is maybe this game is the year they just drop the total stinker. But the way I shook out the schedule, they just feel like like a big trap spot, and I'm going with Mississippi State. I don't like that the two experts are picking losses here. Somebody show us some optimism. Could it be me? I could do it. <laughs> I'm picking them to win. Although last year that was the worst they looked all year was against Mississippi State. And so Mississippi State clearly knows something, how to, how to beat Kentucky somehow. And and I remember the way that that offense, Mississippi State offense, just sliced and died, and they let him, Will Rogers just complete pass after pass. So my question would be, does Mark Stoops, you know, make those adjustments that, that – or do they kind of go with that same strategy? They're probably more talented. Kentucky's probably more talented. It's at home. That's why I'm picking them. But I think Will Rogers could easily be the second best quarterback in the league. I think him and Will Levis are, you know, two A, two B. Probably it's going to come down to which quarterback plays better. I think Levis maybe stands out in this one a little bit, and Kentucky gets the win. But it scares me completely. I think this is the kind of game that decides whether the season's ten and two or seven and five. You know, it's these kind of games. It's a wild swing, BTI, from ten and two or seven and five. No, I mean. This a bunch season, of toss-up games, though. Yeah, it's this how season you do toss-up is, games. 
this season could go six and six, and you really go like it was five plays that cost us a ten win season, and it was six and six. I mean, I think that's let's that's not fun. Scott Frost this, all right? Let's just let's stay <laughs> yeah. on the, the good vibes. Not every <laughs> close game. You don't have to lose every close game. That's and I, as you see, my my final record, I I didn't have them losing every close game, yes. but they, you know, I think that's what this season will be is a nine close games. I mean, I think it's going to be tight. I, I, I picked the win in. I picked the win in this one. Uh, although I will admit that Nick and Adam definitely have me uh, very concerned. I basically just went with every single year the home home team wins. Uh, Starkville is the twilight zone, and UK just always manages to you know suck wind down there. Back to Kroger Field, it's going to be a, a high profile game. Going to be everybody's excited for it. Uh, so that's why I went with with a win. I'm going to uh, flip that optimism back and make this a, a positive stream. Although. In, internally, I will I will admit that I'm a little little bit razzled. Nick, where's your pirate costume for this for this game? He's got derby pirate. hats just ready to go wherever. Oh, I got They're probably just posting up in every room. <laughs> Someone else take a stab at it, Tyler. I already said I predicted a win. Oh, sorry, yeah. Zach. Were you uh, were you a win also? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a win also. Uh, I think this will be the closest game they probably get so far, and it's going to just come down to, I think, luck it says it best, with whoever has the better quarterback is probably going to win. So I've given it to Levis there. I think having back-to-back -back, uh, home games will benefit them as well. So go the Cats. I think that's homecoming, alumni, UK Hall of Fame weekend. Another so, game double dip. Yep. Yeah, so in night-night atmosphere. So that, that will certainly play in Kentucky's favor as well. Now for the bye week, I tried to rush when I was overlooking the Bulldogs. Uh, and while we're on a bye, I'll remind everyone, if you're still here 30 minutes into this, please subscribe to the KSR YouTube channel. You should have already done it by now. You're obviously on the page. If you're listening to me, just hit the damn button and leave us some comments. Next week, we'll be doing the Kentucky football podcast or KSR football podcast on here. Jack will be doing sources say on here. Eventually, we'll all be moving to live broadcast. We're just getting started, bro, as uh, Mark Stoops would say. So please... Hit subscribe and uh, buy stock in this channel now during this bye week conversation where we don't have any picks to say. And now let's move forward to a game where I'll admit I will be negative for the rest of my life. I don't care if Tennessee has one player on their team. I will pick them to Kentucky because I cannot take any more scars on this body in this rivalry. So for me, I will go first. We're going to lose in Knoxville because water is wet and sky is blue. Uh, someone else chime in because I'm sure I'm not the only one who's uh, conditioned to seeing losses in this one. Yeah, same. I, I just can't. I've seen too many heartbreaking losses. I've gotten my hopes up too many times. I've had like the victory bourbon ready just to have the rug pulled out from under me. Every year I kind of predict a loss and really hope I'm wrong. Same, same thing here. Uh, I will note that last year when we did this, I correctly predicted every single game, uh, which included a weird stretch where you lost three in a row. Uh, I, this feels like the weird wall in between. Despite all the bad vibes around Tennessee, I'm trying to tell myself that we've seen the best of Hinton Hooker. Like He can't be any better than what he was last year. He's going to regress. But like most people with a pulse that cheer for the Kentucky Wildcats, Neon Stadium is the worst place in America, and just thinking about going there gives me just a gross feeling inside. No Kentucky coach has ever won at Gainesville and Knoxville in the same season, and that, that's that's a piece of history that I, I'm, I'll, I'll be doubting Thomas until I see it. For me, there's three big road games on this schedule. Florida, Ole Miss, Tennessee. I don't think Kentucky's going to be favored to win any of those, but there'll be a small dog in all three. It would be really, really hard to win all three. Um, I've got them winning two. Um, I think one and two or two and one is probably the likely, most likely record for those. So I just, for me, I could not pick them to win this game. If I would have had a different result in one of the previous ones, I probably would have picked them to win here. Um, obviously, the how Kentucky played defense against Tennessee is going to give a lot of people nightmares leading into this game. But um, I really do think it's a 50-50 game. It could go either way. Um, but just – Breaking the, those down, there's it's hard for me to see them go three and zero in that stretch. So I think the loss comes here against Tennessee. It's, Kentucky comes off a bye. Um, Tennessee has UT Martin the week before FCS opponent, but 
Another thing to remember, Mark Stoops, even in 2018 and 2021, when they won 10 games, they've lost consecutive games in both those seasons. Um, it was three in a row last year, and the year before uh, 2018, it was Georgia, then at Tennessee, back-to-back. So it's, we have seen them lose consecutive games before, and that's what I'm calling for here Mississippi State and then Tennessee. BTI, you have that look in your eyes like you're also – Yeah, no, I mean, I, I picked them to lose for a lot of the same reasons, and I would say, you know, the couple of years that they have been able to beat Tennessee – the key factor has been Tennessee has had an absolute poop quarterback. And this year they don't. Even if you think Hooker regresses some, which I, I don't know if he will, but he's still a good quarterback. We can't deny that. So they, they're good at that position. The way Kentucky's been able to beat them is poor quarterback play by the balls. And they're not going to have that, plus the game's there. So it's just – it's hard for me to envision them going there and doing it. But, as I mentioned earlier, Mark Stoops has surprised us he surprises us big one time every year, it seems like. And this could be the spot where we go, nah, that that's a throwaway game, and they go in there and, and they're able to get it get it done. Plus, I think payback from last year, I, I'm sure that loss hurt the team quite a bit last year, a chance to go go down there and pay them back. That could, that could be a factor, too. Yeah, if there's going to be a year where they beat Florida and Tennessee on the road, this one might be your best bet of the last maybe 40 years or whatever. So, But I still do think that ultimately just playing – on the road is going to be way too much for them, uh, even coming off the bye and, and kind of what everybody else has said. Does that leave me? Drew, can you check the list? Am I the only one picking a win in, in, in Knoxville? Maria, it says. Maria as well. You're, you're the only one that showed up for this meeting. Here, <laughs> here's the deal. Mark Stoops is horrendous coming off a of bye week. Yeah. Always, always. It never fails. It's, the, it's always a stinker. And he is also horrendous in Knoxville. I see that as a double negative, which is a positive in my book. I'm going for a Kentucky win. They're going to make history the first time they win in the Swamp and uh, in Neyland Stadium. Uh, for what Adam Adam said, I think they're going to get two of the three in those three big road games, Florida, Ole Miss, and Tennessee. They're going to win at Florida and at Tennessee, lose uh, in Oxford. I'm going for a uh, very close win uh, in Knoxville. We'll say your math makes good sense there. I like the, the the double negative. You might have almost flipped me if I hadn't have seen three decades of three plus decades of these losses. Math works. Uh, the following week we got uh, the the yellowest yellow to every yellow. Uh, Missouri, Nick's favorite road trip to make anytime Kentucky can go out there. I think Nick would actually be a Missouri beat writer if he could. Uh, Nick, what do you see happening between Kentucky and Mizzou? A very sleepy noon kickoff. Yep. <laughs> that uh, Eli Drinkwitz will muck up and play really dirty. But I just think his team stinks, and he's probably – like he's he's in a very similar spot with another former App State coach where he's actually recruited really well, um, but the results don't match it. So they're in a, they're in a weird spot. Um, and I, I just think his team's going to be bad. They'll play close enough, and he'll probably buy another year. But if they weren't willing to give Barry Odom one, I, I, I guess his recruiting is good enough to do well. I don't know. It's it's very similar to what Scott Satterfield's doing at, at UofL right now. Yeah, I'll go ahead and hop on. Do you all remember at SEC Media Days when the Missouri player kept going on and on and on about how much they hate Kentucky and how this is a rivalry? Like, does anybody on the Kentucky side consider this a rivalry? Like, when I think of Missouri, I just think of, one, they had a petting zoo outside near the tailgates that Nick wrote about, and I mm -hmm. thought it was really weird. And they have that big, like, M made out of rocks that yes. people sit by, which seems very strange and slightly dangerous, like probably more dangerous than their football team. So, yeah, I'm going for, I'm going with a win here. I, I can't imagine being scared of Missouri and Drinkowitz. Like, oh, yeah. you got to see the rocks in person, too. It's, it's, it's just really hard to <laughs> – Man, what a place. It's such a <laughs> Yeah, it's this has trap game written all over it. But if you think it, if Kentucky plays Georgia for the East, like this is a game you have to win, right? Like there's no getting around that. I think that's going to be in play when Kentucky goes to Missouri. There's they're still going to have a chance to do that, but they got to win there. So I think you'll see a a team and a coaching staff that's pretty locked in on this opponent and they're, they're just, they're better than Missouri. So I think with that, they, they avoid the trap game and it helps with, with the way I broke it out, losing to Tennessee, losing two in a row. I think they'll, they'll shake out of that funk against 
um, Missouri and at least maybe give them a shot. They'll probably need some help from Georgia, but they'll at least have a shot to host Georgia uh, for the SEC East, which we'll get to down the road. Does anyone have this uh, as a loss for Kentucky? I mean, we can all go around and make fun of Eli all day and how yellow it is, but I, I feel like it looks like the stats say we're all pretty confident on this when it was a unanimous across the board for Kentucky. Anybody want to add anything to how they're going to make it happen? Well, I will say that I think Missouri, even in their highest preseason projections and rankings, are clearly the second worst team in the SEC, and they might not even be, you know, they Vanderbilt might be even better than them after week zero. So <laughs> I think uh, Missouri is pretty clearly one of the worst teams in the league. And I think that shouldn't be, even on the road, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Scaring off Connor Basilak to go to Indiana was bizarre. I, I I didn't get that. They didn't go out and get anybody better than him. I it just feels well, like they, they, they tried, but they couldn't. Yeah, so it's kind lot. of a, a weird little spot here for, for the drink. That that Vanderbilt game isn't really a weird spot, but we, we make jokes about it. Mike Wright, when he came into that Vanderbilt game, Drew, last year against Kentucky, I mean they were beating him by a million, but the whole entire big blue nation, I think, was thinking. Why didn't they play this guy earlier? He's been starting now, uh, day one this whole entire year. They need, it might be a, a hard out. I know it's not a difficult road environment down there in your uh, hometown, Tyler. But that is going to be, I think, a little bit trickier than the Vanderbilt we've got grown accustomed to in recent years. Well, this game's in Lexington, Plus the Vanderbilt open. game. So, Why am I thinking it's in? Yeah, Nashville? I mean, you can come visit me if you want, just to Nick hang it, out in Nashville. He likes the Vanderbilt road trip. He just, <laughs> Dude, just, just, day day just loves going. beer. I mean, they do yeah, give you beer in the, the press West box. <laughs> yeah, the hottest team in college football is coming to Lexington this year. I mean, we got to deal with what we just saw last Saturday night or last Sunday morning. We got the Commodores back in Lexington. Yep. Tyler, what's what are we going to see from uh, your? Well, not your team, but your neighboring team down there in Nashville. I didn't stay up out. to watch that game. Like, do, should I be scared of Vanderbilt? How bad is Hawaii? 63 to 10. I did not anticipate that score when I woke up. Like, I'm not scared of Vanderbilt. I mean, even in Nashville, I'm not scared of Vanderbilt. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a win. <laughs> well, it actually might be an advantage for Vanderbilt when they play in Lexington. Cold weather, potentially. Fans aren't as into it, whereas if it's a road game, Ducky fans are more into it. The fans are making a cup snake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, thank uh, for assistance from the admin here at UK. There won't be cup snakes, so <laughs> maybe the buzz will be less because less cup snakes. But Vanderbilt's still a thin roster. It's end of the season. They should be pretty worn down at this point. Kentucky, in theory, should still be playing for something. Uh, I think they should be able to handle their business here. Uh, this one was unanimous across the board. Uh, BTI, you want to add something to it? Yeah, just, I mean, I think if the season's going well, this is not really a factor. But the one thing that hurts Kentucky forever in history is a running quarterback or a mobile quarterback. Vanderbilt does have one. Um, he looked pretty good against Hawaii for those of us who stayed up. But, uh, I mean, it is Vanderbilt. And they are thin, less talented, not a lot of great playmakers around. At Kentucky, if, they're, if they come in focused at all, this should be – Two, two to three scores better, for sure. Is no one worried that Vanderbilt changed their logo in the offseason to that intimidating font change that we've seen? I mean, wow, I thought they were going to get some first-place votes from from that. I, that actually – I thought that the logo thing they had going was actually the best thing they had going. <laughs> yeah, bring back they, the They anchor. went backwards. <laughs> bring back the anchor. I don't – Vandy. Yes. Well, we're all picking a win against Vanderbilt to set up uh, at least by law of averages, doing the calculations in my head of all our predictions, setting up what brings college game day to town for uh, a play in game for the SEC championship in Atlanta. We all have been thinking and dreaming about this scenario uh, for months now. Now let's give our predictions. I'll just throw it out there first. Does anyone want to lead off with some positivity with Kentucky versus the Georgia Bulldogs, who will most likely be undefeated when they come to Lexington? I'll be positive because if you're ever going to do it, you're going to do it now when you have Will Levitt at quarterback. He played the dog as good as anybody did last year. Um, and I, I forget the exact sequence of events. It was the the drop, not jumping on the, the loose ball, right? Like that that's the one play you can't give up in that game that completely changes it. it I do the, the, the whole scenario of this is very frustrating though, because it feels like this is the time to get Georgia. Even though they have recruited well, um, 
Like Stetson Bennett isn't that dude. Their running backs aren't those dudes. They aren't Nick Chubb. They aren't Sony Michelle. They, they aren't the typical guys that you typically see on the outside. They do have Brock Bowers and 1,700 tight ends. But the thing that's very frustrating is their schedule is so easy. I mean, really, for this to be like what we want it to be, they have to lose at Mississippi State. They play nobody else on their schedule except Auburn. Auburn's trash. Florida's going to be garbage this year. You need to like pray for Anthony Richardson to have 700 yards against it. Like, there has to, you need some help, right? And Kentucky has a chance to do it. They have a chance to knock off Georgia at home. I just fear that the time they finally beat them is a time where, well, I, I guess technically the tiebreaker, if they beat them and they both only had one loss, but I'm predicting two losses. So it's going to be tough to still get in the East, even if you do find a way to beat uh, Georgia. Nick, to your point, this is completely Brian Harson's fault. The Auburn game is supposed to threaten Georgia every year. But he sucks so bad that so he has bad. given Georgia a cupcake in what is supposed to be one of their most difficult games. So yeah. I that agree is, they'll be undefeated when they come in. That's for me, ultimately. I just have Georgia running the table. I think Mississippi State the week before is sneaky. I think if you look at Georgia's schedule, the Florida-Tennessee at Mississippi State stretch going into Kentucky is – that's tough. Um and even if it, they are undefeated, I think Kentucky could have a pretty good shot at beating them, even if it isn't for the East, because um, if Will Levis is what we, we think he is, that's those are the type of players that really challenge these Kirby Smart, Nick Saban-type defenses. But I, I, it's, it's hard for me to not pick Georgia just because of how they've dominated. I think, it's, I think this game is going to be the first real close one we've seen in the series in a while. Um, but I, it's hard for me not to pick Georgia. I, I pick Georgia here in what could be a, a great atmosphere regardless. Um, hopefully they find a way to lose one on the way in the, for the East. But I, I don't see that happen. Anybody want to join Nick in uh, trying to get us fired up for this one? I would love to burn Lexington down. If you're looking for one positive, it is that – you can't stop talk, talking about the tight ends with Kentucky or Scangarello. Every time he has a mic in front of his face, he's talking about the tight end room in Kentucky, how it's better than uh, what it was like in the NFL. Uh, they go against it every single day in practice. That's going to be something that they, it, they're, it's, you know, with how tight end heavy Georgia is and how much talent there is at that position there. Uh, if you're looking for one positive, it, it is that uh, Kentucky should be a solid matchup going against them every day in practice and, and Kentucky's deep tight end room. So that's my one little, like, you know, maybe shot, but I think it's uh, going to be a tough loss. It's going to end Kentucky's uh, road to Atlanta uh, and, and everybody's hypes about that SEC championship game. I think uh, they, they take a loss there. The, the, the defense of Georgia was the talking point last year, and it will be again because Jalen Carter, Kelly, I mean, they're awesome. But like Stetson Bennett played out of his mind against UK. I mean, he looked like an NFL guy. He was playing so well. You're, you're not going to get that kind of play from Hooker, uh, Bennett and uh, Will Rogers this year. Like, not all three of them can play that great. And, like, that that wasn't just Kentucky secondary. Like, that Brock Bowers touchdown in the end zone was great coverage, great defense, and a good blitz. Like, he got hit in it. It was just the perfect Georgia play. Um, I, I, that's my hope. I, I'm hoping a lot of things come together. And you know what? If you're not if you're not going to dream big, then why dream at all? <laughs> What, I would say what, this. what gamble do we have to do with Mother Nature to get it to be the coldest, <laughs> nastiest, wettest, snowiest day in history? Like, well, the Chris, you if you might recall, Chris Rodriguez dropped a very important touchdown. I think that would have given Kentucky a lead in a monsoon in the second half back in 2019. Chris Rodriguez revenge. This is how he puts his stamp. He gets a little. Oh, you thought I was down and out during the offseason? I'm back. <laughs> not not that anyone on the team wouldn't already be fired up to play Georgia, but there's a couple of those where it's in the back of their heads, some some miscues in the past. You have him. Uh, Jacques Jones probably hasn't slept since the game in Athens. I think DeAndre Square had a costly mistake in that game. I mean, they're already going to be at their best, but there is some revenge aspects to that too. Trevin Wallace didn't get recruited by them. You know, there's a lot of Georgia guys on this roster probably chomping at the bit to beat the dogs. I mean, plus they're the reigning national champion. I think everybody wants to beat him. So. And the, ske the schedule actually plays well for Kentucky because we get Vanderbilt the week before. The three weeks before they play Kentucky, they go Florida, 
which Florida's not very good, but that's still a, a rivalry that, that will require some energy. Tennessee at home. I think Tennessee can probably challenge Georgia, probably not beat them, but challenge them. And then on the road at Mississippi State. So they're going to be in the fourth week of four straight weeks of pretty tough games. And Kentucky's going to be coming off Vanderbilt. And so, you know, Missouri think, and Vanderbilt, right? right. If Missouri so is as bad as you think they are. Right. Maybe Georgia's worn down by that point, and Kentucky's got a little more energy, you know. Um, I, I, I'm not picking it, but I think that's going to be very competitive. I really do. The, the signs are there for people to believe in. You go back and look at 2010 Alabama, um, who is kind of a carbon copy of this Georgia team. Uh, a quarterback, a limited quarterback who people said they could ne- doubted their whole career, and they finally break through. They win a national championship. A defense littered with NFL guys who were was a dominant unit, but they lose a ton of eight, nine starters off that unit. Um, they had the Alabama had to get through Florida and Tim Tebow and Urban Meyer. This Georgia team had to get through Nick Saban, they, and then Bryce and Bryce Young after that he beat them. They finally bust through. They have there. I mean, they're still celebrating the national championship in Athens. Um, so there is gonna, there is potential where they could have a potential hangover. Um, and how the schedule breaks up, it really kind of sets up well for Kentucky. You can't ask it to set up any better than this. It's just getting there and having a chance to play for it. And that's really where you you just there's a schedule with Georgia. Just they have a great schedule this year. And so you got to hope that you know if Kentucky's sitting there at what eight and two. That Georgia's sitting there at nine and one. If they're not Kentucky, to, to get it to where they need to be, they're going to just have to be awesome in all those away games, and they can't afford a, a clunker. And that's just hard to predict from what we've seen in the past. We can't make Georgia's opponents any better, but as BTI noted, it at least works out in Kentucky's favor leading up to that game. It's even better in Kentucky's favor after that game because if they lose to Georgia, at least we have our favorite punching bag sitting there that we can let our anger out on. The University of Louisville and well, almost cuss talking about Satterfield. I better not do that yet. I, we don't care for him, but I shouldn't call him what I was about to say. But Louisville will be waiting uh, after the Georgia game. And I know we're all very excited about that one. Will Levis might do a little more hurdling. Maybe we can run up the score as they have the last couple of years. I'll go first with that one. I'm picking a win in that game every time for the rest of my life, no matter what the rosters look like. But I do think Kentucky's still light years ahead of their senior citizen transfer team they brought in. So I'm taking the Cats on that one in a rebound game against Georgia. Tyler, what about you? Or a rebound game after losing to Georgia. Tyler, what about you? I mean, I can't pick a loss against Louisville. I think it's not if Kentucky is going to beat Louisville, it's by how much. So maybe in addition to our game predictions, we can give a score prediction or just a margin. I mean, last year was absurd. The past three years have been absurd. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think – Kentucky's outscored Louisville by a million, two million. I don't know. I think um, it's I think 98 this, points, actually. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. close enough. I mean, right. in football terms. So, yeah, I, I think it's going to be more of the same, especially this game's at home. It, it's Will Levis's last game, maybe Chris Rodriguez's last game. They're going to want to go out on a high note. Ton of great seniors, super seniors on this team. I, I think Cats by literal 90. Who else wants to share some Louisville trash talk with us? I mean, I agree. I just, I, I think it'll be a, a, a pretty easy win, mostly because of what Tyler said with the end of the year stuff and it being kind of the final game. It'll be personal for a lot of the Kentucky players. Uh, the Satterfield talent that they've been recruiting is not even on campus yet. So there's not, you know, all those guys that they brought in, that's going to be a little bit of a, a process. I'm sure they'll be at that point by the end of the year, but. I think the overall talent level of Kentucky will just be too overwhelming at that point, especially if they're coming off a loss to Louisville, or to Georgia the week before. The thing with this Louisville team is I actually want to – for some reason I, in my brain, I'm like they, a lot of people I respect are bullish on them, so I think they might be better, and I want to believe them. But the thing about this game is that Scott Satterfield, for as well as he's recruited and all that Mikhail Malik – whatever his name is at quarterback, there's no culture there, right? Like it's nothing like what he did at App State. And every time they play this game, it's actually – Kentucky's won by a million points, but there's like this weird breaking point where Kentucky just rips out their soul and they decide to quit tackling. You can see Louisville players actively just like not caring anymore in these games. And maybe that goes a little bit longer this year, but like 
it astonishes me that a team can quit in a rivalry game as quickly as Louisville can. It really is baffling. And if I was a Cardinal fan, I, it, it's the most embarrassing part of being a Louisville fan is watching your team quit in a rivalry. At least when Kentucky was losing to Louisville, we were throwing trash cans at him, right? You were going down to swing it. Even Mickey Crum was fighting – uh, Vince Tyre on the sideline trying to get back in the game. <laughs> These cards don't have any heart under Scott Satterfield. And frankly, it's sad how far they fall. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little – I think Kentucky's going to win. But there's not the, the the puff game the week before that we've seen in years past. They have to play a legit SEC game that many of us think will be the biggest SEC game. The Mark Stoops tenure will be the biggest home game in Lexington – in a long, long, long time. So getting off the mat, win or loss after that, is going to be tough, even if it is for Louisville. Um, now, the good thing with this is Louisville also closes the season really tough with at Clemson, NC State at home. Um, so they're going through their own little ringer there. Still think Kentucky, better on the line of scrimmage, and they'll, they'll win this game. And I do think there's a mental aspect uh, to this matchup right now. But I think it, the game's probably going to be closer than people – expect um I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's an ugly game with both teams kind of um going through the ringer there at the end of the season but i still expect kentucky to win this rivalry tends to go in ebbs and flows and certainly like we're in a big ebb right now where we're just we're dominating but U of L dominated us for years with petrino they did a little bit under charlie strong and then at some point that rivalry flips and i think it's, it, this, this game this year is all about Louisville. It's not anything about Kentucky. It's where is Louisville's program at the time of the game? Is Satterfield on the way out or yeah. have been fired? Or are they 7-4 are they and four and they're having a great year in their terms? And they've got something to prove. And if they do, it's dangerous. I think it is dangerous. And we're going to be coming off Georgia. But if they're 4-7, and seven, it could be another 35-point blowout. It really could. I think it's going to be very important for the uh, recruiting reasons. I think uh, it would be phenomenal to send them out with one final blowout victory and then have their entire recruiting class cr crumble. Uh, all their confidence about moving forward. Yes, this is the future of the program. Uh, you know, let's think for the future, all that. I think it'd be just absolutely just you know, icing on the cake, chef's kiss for the uh, Kentucky to end, end the year with a big blowout victory once again and then have their entire uh, future collapse shortly thereafter for signing day. Yeah, I mean, Adidas is going to go broke on that recruiting class. I mean, they're, I'm, I didn't think they're going to have to cut all their endorsements in the NBA and NFL just to pay for Louisville's recruits the way they're going now. But uh, we were unanimous across the board on Kentucky wins there, which is a great way to end the season, whatever we all thought about what happened in between. Uh, that wraps up all 12 games. If you're still here, that's awesome. We went like an hour. <laughs> Hopefully, you're already subscribed. Uh, next week, the KSR Football Podcast will be debuting here on this channel. 11 Personnel has already been on here a lot. Uh, Jack does his sources say. Tyler, tell, them, tell everyone a little bit more of what's in store on our YouTube and why they should be following along. Yeah, in addition to every press conference, every post-practice interview, like Drew said, we've got original content coming out. We're bringing on a new videographer that's going to be a game. He's going to be going around to the catwalk and tailgate, the pregame show. You're going to have so much fun content. Basically, everything you would want if you're a Kentucky fan is going to be on this YouTube channel, which is a pretty big promise, but I think we can deliver. Yeah, I think we will. And I know I speak for all of us when I say we're excited to do it. This was a long time coming. We should have started it years ago, but we lack the manpower because we all work hard enough doing our written work. But now on three has really invested in this YouTube channel and we're very excited to show our readers and listeners what more we can do. And it helps that both basketball and football are lining up to be very awesome. And this was awesome. We're right at an hour. Why don't you all go uh, watch some TV and relax? I know it's been a day with Stoops press conference all the way through kicking off this week one. Thank you all for participating and thank everyone for watching. This has been KSR's season preview of the football season to come, which starts Saturday <laughs> against Miami. Let's go Cats.